There's the story about David and Goliath. And always when we learn about it at school, everyone loves David, the little redhead versus Goliath the monster, and he hits him on the head. The sad thing about it is that this is how the world sees Israel today, that we're Goliath, that we're the wicked, and the Palestinians are little poor David. Now that the guardian of the walls operation is over, there's tremendous criticism against Israel all around the world. The UN wants to investigate Israel for war crimes, etc. Now, if you look at what goes on in Syria, there are 10 million refugees, half a million dead, including many children that were bombed with chemical weapons and whatnot. And the world is a bit critical about it. Now, Israel makes supernatural efforts that no army in history ever made in order not to hurt civilians. And we become Goliath, the wicked war criminal. Right. Is the world blind? This is what I don't get. No. The world is complaining. Why are we not allowing the entire world to kill us? Why would we? Are we crazy? This is what the world thinks, that this is what we deserve. Why does the world think that we deserve to die? Because in the egoistic form that we exist in, we, by our ego, cause the ego in all of mankind to erupt on all levels and in all directions. And therefore, all the evil that comes to the world comes because of the people of Israel that are corrupted and don't want to correct themselves. Suppose missiles would fall in the center of Moscow or New York, or in Washington. Then, sure, they'd resist it. They'd resist it, and everyone would agree that each and every nation has the right to protect itself. Why can't we? We can't, because to begin with, we're in a situation where we have an increased will to receive, and everything that happens to us eventually happens to the rest of the world, and therefore we deserve to suffer more than the rest of the world. So there's a different law for Israel and for the rest of the world. No, it's not a different law, but it's according to one's development. What do you mean? That because we're more developed than everyone, to that extent, we also have to be responsible for the entire world. And we deserve to suffer more so that maybe we'll correct ourselves and the rest of the world will calm down. Is there something that we can do in order to calm the world down? Because we're very cautious in Gaza and it doesn't help. You know what? Intelligence said that during this operation they used artificial intelligence, the most advanced possible stuff that the human brain can invent, what for? So that every missile will hit its precise target so that, God forbid, no civilian will get killed. It's an army of righteous, not of war machines. Were a rocket or a missile to fall in Moscow or Washington, they'd erase entire areas in enemy countries. True. So I don't understand to what degree you're saying that we have to be better, more developed. We're trying. No, not better in terms of not killing people there. You have to be better in terms of you completely erasing the reason, which is your ego. My ego? Your ego, and mine, and his, and everyone's. The nation of Israel has to take care of its ego, and by that, it'll take care of the general ego of humanity. And what about Gaza's ego? That too will disappear. So wait a second. You gave me a new diagnosis here that I never heard before. You're saying that if you're hated in Gaza, and you have to go on an operation or to physically protect your life, aside from the fact that you have to fight there, there's something deeper that you have to correct inside of Israel. The Israeli ego, and each and every person. I don't know how is it possible to correct the Israeli ego. Look at what goes on in the country, in the political arena. Everyone's king. Don't explain it to me. I'm talking about the laws of nature. Don't look for justifications. I'm telling you, this is the law. You're saying, but what can I do? I'm climbing a mountain, and I want to jump off it. I'm telling you, it's better not to. But you're saying, but I want to. Well, if you want to, then go ahead.
Why are you bringing your different justifications that you think that things should be one way or another? I'm telling you, it's the law of nature, and it says so in the wisdom of Kabbalah. It's explained by dozens and even thousands of Kabbalists over time. We're using our ego, we're worse than everyone. By this, we activate the ego of all of mankind, and they know, they feel it from within that it is all because of us. This inner feeling, I think that it really shows them a different reality than the one that we see. True. Meaning, they don't play make-believe, they really see a distorted picture. No, it's not distorted for them, it's the truth. It's not distorted. Great. So they say, get out of here. Not even back to the lines of 67. Today, the lines of 67 is passe. They're saying that the state of Israel shouldn't exist altogether. True. It was a historic mistake, and everyone agrees. And this only gets worse. If you look at what goes on in universities, in Europe, and the United States, not in Muslim countries, these are the leaders of tomorrow. God help us what awaits us. What we have today is heaven compared to what we might have in five or ten years. True? The question is, will this solve the problem? God forbid we'll be banished from here. Will they stop hating us then? We came here because they hate us. How do we get out of this loop? You have to change. You have to change. The people of Israel have to change. The relationship between Jews has to change. And as a result of that, the rest of the world will calm down. You know, I feel like there's a TV screen in which everyone sees a different movie. We see reality in a certain way, and the world sees a completely different movie, like with David and Goliath. But the remote control to what movie are you watching is in our hands, meaning if we Israelis make this inner correction, then their movie changes, they see a different reality. Yes. What button should we push on the remote? Your heart. And what should happen in it? that you will feel love towards the nation of Israel, the state of Israel, the entire world, towards your enemies, your haters, all of mankind. You have to demand only love, to love the world, that's it. And if you will have that, then the entire world will enter love along with you. It says so in the wisdom of Kabbalah. It also says so in the Torah. That if we come to love another as yourself, then there's no nation, there's no leader, regardless of whether he's an Arab or Russian or American, that will be against us. Everyone will feel that, ah, the Creator did great things for them. And then we come back to Zion.